Hi there, I'm Simone Russo from Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and I'm here today to talk to you about my listing process and how I work with sellers to list with me and then I can get their home sold. So here we go. The first step in the listing process is to get the lead. So what normally happens is the lead will come into the office either through a phone call or a web lead and either my assistant will take the lead or the lead will get pushed through directly to me when I answer the phone. So what do I do when the lead first comes in? The very first thing that I do is I pre-qualify the lead and there's a number of questions that I need to ask that seller to ensure that they're a bona fide lead. So this pre-qualification is absolutely key in my listing process. I ask them where they plan to move to, how long have they been at the address that they're currently at. I really dig through all my questioning and I have about two pages of questions, I dig through and I find their true motivation for wanting to sell their home. I'm not interested in working with unmotivated sellers and I'm sure no one out here is either. So the key is to dig into their motivation and really determine if this is someone that I can help and someone that I'm willing to work with. The other thing that happens when I do my prequal, and again, here's the questions. When I do my prequal, I record and write in the answers to every single question. So I have here 21 questions that I ask. The end of this is to set the appointment for the actual listing. So if I get through all the questions, I write down the answers. If I've determined they are a bona fide, qualified lead, I set the appointment. Number two, pre-qualification is done and then I go back and I start my comparative market and analysis, the CMA. So the CMA, along with the, the pre-qual and the answers to the pre-qual, will again give me a level of confidence for that seller to determine if that's someone that I can help and someone that I want to work with. So I work on the CMA after I get off the phone and I pull up all the actives, all the solds that would be comparable to their home and I determine what that selling price could possibly be for that client. Number three is once I have the recommended list price, I'll look at back to my prequal and one of my questions is, how much do you want to list your home for? And if my recommended list price aligns closely enough with what their anticipated selling price is, that's a good step. I think we're moving forward. The lead comes in, I go ahead and I pre-qualify the appointment, I set the appointment, I prepare the CMA, so that's step number four. Now we get into the most important part of my listing process, and that is the follow-up and the calling back. And this is my opportunity to continue to judge their motivation through the follow-up calls that I do. So once I know that the price is aligned from what they want and what the market can bear, my assistant and I, we work on a, a pre-listing package. And in that pre-listing package, I have a number of documents, which I'll show you in more detail later, but that package is put together, packaged, put into an envelope, and either my assistant will deliver it to their home physically, or a courier will bring it to the home. The pre-listing package, I call it the PLP. The PLP goes out before I attend the listing appointment because I want my sellers to see all the information before I show up at their door. Makes sense, right? Let's give them all the information. So my assistant will prepare it all. We get it packaged. We've got a really nice marketing package that we'll go through and show you later and boom, goes out to the house. The client is aware that they're going to be receiving the package, um, so they know always what's going to happen throughout the process. Once the package is sent out and delivered, my assistant puts an appointment in my calendar, and the appointment is to follow up on the PLP. So normally that evening or the next morning, I will call the seller because they would have had by this time chance to open up the package and have a good look at it. I'll call the seller and I'll ask them, did you have a chance to open up the package? And what did you think? Nine times out of 10, they have one or two th questions or they have an objection. The objections could be, where did you get that price? Because one of the things I do do in the pre-listing package is I have a sample listing contract completely filled in, including my fees and the list price and everything that they'll need to get that home sold. So they are well aware of what my recommended list price is when they receive the pre-listing package. So I don't handle the objections over the phone. They say, oh my God, the price, where did you come up with that price? And I say, great question, Mr. Seller. Let me just write that down. That is the first thing that you and I will talk about when I see you tomorrow at 4 p.m. Is that all right with you? They say, yep, great, move on. Is there any other questions? 
Yeah, your fees. I mean, I'm not, I'm not willing to pay those fees. No problem, Mr. Seller. I'm gonna write that down as well and we can talk about the price and the fees as soon as I get to your home tomorrow at four. That's what we do. Once the PLP is delivered, I have followed up. Um, all the objections have been taken now from the seller. They bring them up or not. Sometimes there's no objections. My next step is, for example, if that follow-up call happened on Monday, and my appointment's not until Tuesday, I have about a 24 hour window where I try to get in three to five follow-up calls with the seller to touch base with them, see if there's anything else they thought about, and just to keep me top of mind. So if there's another agent, which is one of my pre-qualifying questions, I will know that in advance because I did my pre-qualification and I expect in fact, I know those agents are not calling the seller as much as I am. And every single time I call the seller as a little follow-up call between my appointment and the pre-qual, I always make sure that I ask a question similar to this. I'll give you an example of a call. So ring, ring, hello. Hi, Mr. Seller, it's Simone calling. I just wanted to check in with you. I know our appointment is today at 4 p.m. And I thought I'd just touch base with you. Is there any other questions you had that had come up overnight that you want me to make sure I'm prepared for at four o'clock? No, Simone, I think uh, everything that you've done and everything looks pretty good. Great, so when I see you at four o'clock, are you planning to list your property with me? Oh, I don't know, Simone, you know, it is looking pretty good, but I'll have to wait to see what you say. Great, okay, see you at four o'clock, bye. Hang up. Then what I do is, maybe that's a nine o'clock call. Then what I'll do after lunch, I'll call another time and I'll do the same thing. Ring, ring, hello, Mr. Seller, it's Simone calling again. I just wanted to touch base with you one more time about your the appointment we have at four o'clock. And I have one other really interesting comparable that I'm gonna bring with me. Did you ever see that property down on Rose Street? No, I haven't, Simone. Oh, great, okay. I'm gonna bring that with me as well. And you know, Mr. Seller, it sounds like you and I are gonna work together, is that right? Well, yeah, you know, things are, I'm pretty happy so far, so then I'll, I'll kind of go on and I'll say, okay, great. I'll see you at four o'clock, bye, click. Then when I'm on my way to the appointment or before I leave my office, I'll call one more time and I'll say something like, ring, ring, hello. Hi, Mr. Seller, it's Simone calling. I'm just leaving my office and I notice it's five o'clock. Is Sarah, your wife at home? Is everything running on time and are we still okay for four o'clock? Oh yeah, we're all ready for you, no problem. We got the kids set up. Finding Nemo's on, great, perfect, okay. I look forward to getting your home on the market and getting it sold. So I look forward to seeing yourself and Sarah at four o'clock and let's get this done, okay? Pause, wait, let them say okay. Now I'm getting the indication that they're on board, they're on the same track as me and I'm gonna take the listing. Okay, now I'm on my way to the house. So I'm driving to the house. I show up to the house 15 minutes before the appointment. I park around the corner, I get myself physically prepared, make sure the hair's good, the makeup's good, and then I get myself mentally prepared, I talk to myself, I listen to really positive things as I'm driving to the house, and I just sit before I go in and I breathe. <sighs> I just breathe, get myself ready, because I know when I walk up that driveway, it's showtime. So I walk up to the door, ding dong, I stand in front of the door, I wait, I usually have my one little folder. I leave my purse in the car, I don't take my purse in. I have everything I need in a zippered folder. And I wait, they open the door, and I say, hi Mr. Seller, I am so excited to get your home listed, get it on the market and get it sold. Are we gonna do this right now? And nine times out of 10, they nod their head, so I take a step into the house and I say, well, let's get this paperwork out of the way. Let's go to the kitchen table and get this done. And usually, the husband and wife, sometimes I'll get the question, well, don't you wanna see my house, Simone? And what I'll just say is, why don't we do this? Let's get this paperwork out of the way and then we can spend some time and go through your house. How does that sound? And then it's done. We sit down, I ask them if they have any questions about the paperwork. We've already talked about price over the phone and uh, boom, 
sign the contract, it's done, put the contract in my bag, and at that point, if I do want to spend a little bit of time looking at the house, I can do it. If not, nice to meet you, I look forward to getting the job done, and I'm out the door. My goal is always to be in and out within 15 minutes. That's the goal. If it takes longer, it's usually because I put the contract in the bag, and then I may go on a little bit of tour with them just to see the home. And that's my listing process. Pretty good. So I welcome that you can use it. And now what I want to do is just show you some of the materials I use. My prequal script is vital to my whole process. I have 21 questions that I ask every question, 100% of the questions, 100% of the time, and I fill in the answers in my computer system. So I've actually recorded all the answers to these questions, um, and this helps me determine whether the client is motivated and if I can help them or not. So that's the pre-qualifying script. Now, I didn't create this. This is something that I've, I've worked with from the Mike Ferry system and I've tailored it to my needs. So that's the pre-qual script. Now, the pre-listing package, we always, 100% of the time, send out a hard copy of the pre-listing package, never by email. We live in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, so this is our waterproof, weatherproof envelope that we use probably three quarters of the year. And what that looks like is on the front would be the name of the seller and address label typed out and then our return address typed out. So when the client gets the package, they open it up and out comes, voila, the pre-listing package. We have an amazing logo sticker here, um, little added benefit. And on the front side, again, is the address label, Simone Russo, and then the client's name would have an address label on the, on the front again. So if the weather, it's the middle of summer, we just use this envelope. If it's cold and rainy and snowy, we use this envelope. What does this look like inside? Let's see. We have our pre-listing package. Inside is our custom folder, Simone Russo and Associates. It is really an exceptional real estate experience. Inside the package, the client opens it up. This is what it looks like. So what I refer to, these are this is more the contract documents and the market analysis on the right side. And on our left side, we have more of the marketing information. So we have a nice custom pen. Behind, tucked behind here, we have the keys. This is giving the seller an indication that I'm gonna need your keys when I come to your house. You are gonna list with me and I'm gonna need your keys. So it's a tiny little key envelope. Quite often I show up to the listing appointment and the keys are already in the envelope before I even have a presentation with them. Then I have a little notepad, post-it note notepad um, on this left side. We have a document, it's our welcome letter we call it, or thank you for considering us. We have a little section about our team, who everybody is on the team. Uh, myself, my partner, Pablo Galvez, our admin team, and then of course our choice vendors and partners. Next important thing on this side is our listing plan of action. This is the plan of action that I use to get my clients homes sold. So this outlines to the seller exactly what I'm going to do in order to get their home sold. And finally on this side is our sample brochure. So this is a sample of what our clients can expect um, to see for their photography and for the marketing materials. So that is the left side of the package. Then on the right hand side, we have starting with the comparative market analysis documents. So this document, it's another little welcome letter, states the time of the appointment, so it's written out for them. As I pull these off, you see this little wonderful clip here. This is a custom paper clip that we've created. I have taken listings before because of this paper clip. People often will say, if you can have attention to detail with respect to the paper clips you use, I want you to be selling my home. Boom. Inside the comparative market analysis is the cover page. We have a summary view of the actives and the sales. The active listings listed, which usually I like to have two or three active listings for my CMA. In this case, there's four. And then the next one is the recent sales in the market. Again, two or three recent sales is optimal. And then finally, the last page of the CMA section is the next step and the summary. So you'll see here, I've given them what my recommended price is. I talk to them a little bit about pricing and then I lay out what the next steps are when they list with me. So that's the CMA portion of the pre-listing package. And then finally, to round out the pre-listing package, the most important document is the contract. So the contract is in here 100% of the time. The contract is always 
filled out completely, again, paper clip, filled out completely with the seller's full name, the, the address information, the recommended list price that I am recommending. We have circles, stamps, wherever they need to initial. The fees are listed here, so they know exactly what the fees are going to be with initials. And as you can see throughout the document, everything is filled in, everything is flagged, and then where they I need their signature, I have flags. Um, if there's missing information, my assistant has put in an X for me so I can get that when I'm in front of them. And what I do is when I'm following up with my clients, I say to them, and if you know that we're going to move ahead, feel free to put your initials wherever you see a circle and sign wherever it's indicated and that'll save us time during the appointment. And it is a delight to show up to people's homes and they've already have this filled in and signed. The final part of this document is the net sheet and I place the net sheet in also 100% of the time. What this does is it creates transparency. It allows the seller to know if I sell for this price, what will my net sale proceeds be at the end of the day? So that is the pre-listing package. It is the absolute silver bullet to the whole process. The pre-qual, the pre-listing package, and all the follow-up I do before I actually go to the appointment is 90% of the work. And when I show up, I get the joy of a very quick listing presentation and I take the listing and we move on. So in summary, I wanted to point something out. You may be thinking, but Simone, this was supposed to be about your listing presentation. I wanted to emphasize that most realtors spend 90% of their time on the presentation at the kitchen table, boring the sellers. The sellers are waiting for them to leave their house. What I do, which has been extremely successful for me, is I spend 90% of my time prior to attending the client's house and spending that little bit of time, 10% of the time with the sellers just to get the listing document signed. So my presentation time, like I said, should only be between about one minute and 15 minutes at the max in the house, out of the house, get the house on the market and get it sold. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, reach out to me anytime. It's Simone at SimoneRusso.com and I'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye for now.